South African weed orchid is a new and emerging weed in Nilambic. Nilambic has an amazing diversity of native orchid species. However, the South African weed orchid could displace many of those species, and some of them are only found in Nilambic, which could have devastating consequences. One of the biggest problems with this weed is that it self-pollinates, then produces millions of tiny dust-like seeds. These seeds can be very easily moved in the wind, and they can also be transmitted on shoes, clothing, equipment, and cars. We need to make sure we remove all the plants that come up every year. If we miss one and the seed spread, the problem grows, and then we have more next year and more again. South African weed orchid can be really tricky to identify. So if you think you found this guy at home, Give us a call and get in contact. We'd like to know where every single known plant is so that we can eradicate them and we can search the surrounding area to see if they've spread. When you're looking for this weed at home, it might look like this or it might look like this. This is its first year in the ground. If we don't remove it, the leaves will die back and the tuber will stay alive to re-sprout next spring. This one is two years old. It's got enough energy in its tuber to grow up a flower head, just like an asparagus and it will set seed this year if we don't remove it. Within the asparagus-like stalk, there are between 20 and 60 tiny little orchid flowers. These can be identified by their purplish-brown hood and little yellow tongue. So we've got our Deza orchid, our South African orchid here, but we've actually also got a native look-alike orchid here, a leek orchid. The leek orchids and the onion orchids look similar to the Deza. The main distinguishing feature is the single leaf in, in the native orchids compared to lots of leaves on the Deza. Now that we've ID'd the Deza orchid, we try and control it and remove it before it sets seed. Best time to do this is October and early November before the plant dries out. So to remove it, we've got our high-tech equipment. We want to dig it out and get both the old wrinkled tuber and the new fresh bulb, both the bulbs out. Um, and to do that, we need to give it quite a wide margin when we're hand removing it. So we need to get the screwdriver in with a bit of a margin around the plant and need to go quite deep to make sure that we loosen the little bulb at the base. Then once the plant's loosened, we can safely pull it up. And yep, we can confirm it's got its old wrinkle tuber and its new fleshy tuber. Once you've removed the plant with its old and fresh bulbs, it's best to put the whole thing into a plastic bag and into landfill. We just can't take risks having this spread throughout our green waste. But, but if we start seeing them, uh, dry off then it's we've got to be really careful and and possibly not remove it maybe put a bucket over it instead then the dust like seeds which are the one of the biggest problems with this with this weed will be contained uh, and they won't be able to disperse by wind so obviously they'll drop within the bucket but we won't get them spreading everywhere around the bucket containment zone. If you think you found South African weed orchid, give us a call at council and an officer like me can help come out and ID it. We can give advice in how to eradicate it and may be able to provide some financial assistance to help control it. We need to all work together if we're going to eradicate this weed and protect our rare threatened orchids and wildflowers. It's going to take an army.